I'd like to make an observation about church buildings. Uh, my wife and I were talking the other morning and around breakfast time, and, and uh, I said, you know, church buildings are for teaching lost people religious things when you get right down to it. You say, well, you know, bear with me for a minute. Even if you are the most diehard attendee of a church building out there, you're a Baptist and you love the uh, <clears throat> house of God, uh, whatever you want to call the building that you attend, um, you have to admit something if you have any concern for truth, and that is the vast majority of buildings that call themselves churches um, are for teaching lost people religious things. Um, even if you're a diehard Roman Catholic, you have to admit that there's a lot of people that go to your system that aren't really sincere about their beliefs. Oh, what are they doing there? I mean, why are you going to church if you're really not serious about eternity? Um, because you can go there and it's a nice little social club and you can learn the right things to say um, to make a, a, a veil for your sin, essentially, to cover up what you really are. I mean, how many times have you heard some guy comes out and he's been arrested for murdering somebody or he's a serial killer or whatever, and they say, and, I, and he was a faithful church attendee. You'll hear that. Jeffrey Dahmer, back while he was killing people and whatever else, killing these sodomite guys that he was with and, and whatever and eating them and cutting up their bodies and things, he was going to church. He even took one of his victims to church with him the one time before he killed him. You know, one of his gay lovers and whatever else. You know, um, a lot of people do that. Faithful church attendees. Um, so I've t asked this question many times in the past in different studies, and I'll ask it one more time because it proved my point, and that is um, who has used church buildings more, God or the devil? So I'm not going to stand here and say that nobody, it's, you know, everybody that's ever attended a church building is uh, lost. They were never really truly saved or anything. I'm, I've never made that statement. Um, I used to attend church buildings, but uh, what I saw there going to church buildings over the years, I saw that there was a lot of people there that were there, just there in social club or, or whatever reason that they were there, and they really had no desire for a true personal relationship with Jesus Christ. But I'm going to show you the best passage of Scripture that describes these people. Because you see, again, understand something. For centuries, there was no such thing as church buildings. There were no ch church buildings in 1500 A.D. or 1100 or 900 or 800 or whatever else. There were no Baptist church buildings or, you know, I'll say, uh, uh, you know, heretic. <laughs> That's what we would have been called by the Catholic Church. There weren't any. Nobody was building church buildings up until just the last few hundred years after the Reformation. See, it was the Catholics that always had the cathedrals and the temples and whatever else. And then the people, uh, you know, <clears throat> came out of the Catholic Church. But then they wanted the same buildings to worship in. Hmm. But for centuries, there was no such thing. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Are we in perilous times? Yes. And they're going to get more perilous. Verse 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. We'll get back to that. Verse 6. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Hmm. You say, well, that's, that's a perfect description of the lost people out there that don't go to church. Uh, no, actually, I, I think it's a perfect description of people that go to church buildings. Religious people. How do you know? Verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. It's not talking about just lost people out there, atheists and whatever other deluded fools out there. It's talking about people that attend churches. They have a form of godliness. Hey, if you say, I have a form of godliness, I'm a Christian, what's somebody going to say? Oh, where do you worship at? 
Where do you go to church? Yeah. They have a form of godliness. They go there and they learn about Jesus dying on the cross. They learn about the Bible. This is God's Word. And yet they're taught that any one of hundreds of versions, is all they're all God's Word. It just is up to you. You pick which one that you like. There is no thus saith the Lord. There is no final authority. It just is whichever translation you like. Or you can go back to Hebrew or Greek and, and pick which one of those that you like. And you can pick your uh, different you know, lexicon and you can pick your this and you can pick your that. Uh-huh. Yeah. What is it? Form of godliness. But how do you pick out them from the real Christians, the real ones? Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. A real Christian has power. Um, you might want to say a, a changed life. Mm -hmm. Fellowship of the Spirit is another one of the things. You'll have real true Christians that one of you will think something and somebody else will say it and the one thinking will say, I was just thinking that. I've seen that thing for years. I'll come out with a sermon and I'll say, Lord just showed me this thing. Boom, there it is. And I'll get a couple people in the comments saying, I was just reading my Bible and I was thinking the exact same thing. This is weird. Are you reading my mind or something? And we'll get that. Or we'll be talking about something, my wife and I, and all of a sudden some Christian that you know we know, friend of the ministry or whatever else, and they'll say, hey, brother, did you ever think about this? And it's the exact thing that we were talking about. There's no possible way. There's no way that we're communicating and making these things happen. What is it? It's the fellowship of the Spirit. Power, you see. Holy Spirit power. And you get the charismaniac nuts and they come out and they say, we have Holy Spirit power. We can speak in tongues and they blah, 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 and do this thing, which is fake. Speaking in tongues in the Bible are just their known languages. You say, what about the unknown tongues in 1 Corinthians 14? Uh, that's why there's an interpreter there. Okay? Um, they're still languages. Again, I've done studies on that. But my whole point is, charismatics come out and they fake. They do the speaking in tongues. They fake that. And then they'll, they'll fake the thing of healing and whatever else. They couldn't heal a sick cat. All right? If you really have the gift of healing, of divine healing, go to the hospital. What are you doing gathering around in your little church building thing there? Go down to the hospital and just start laying hands on the sick and the sick recovering. They never do it. And they, they, they can't. They can't. They'll use a little mind control hypnosis and whatever else. And, you know, you get some of the, the bigger ones like uh, Torben Sundergaard and the Last Reformation and whatever else. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. And they'll go and, oh, we're laying hands on the sick and there's a mighty working of God and all this. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. It's fake. It's a fraud. Again, I've done different teachings and things on that. But what we have here in this passage, this represents people in church buildings. Let's look at the list. Uh, verse 2. I mean, you see perilous times coming in verse 1, and yet how many people in church buildings even want to talk about it? Again, think about that one. Well, that's negative. Okay, well, let's just let's focus on things that are a little bit more positive. Okay, let's not talk about conspiracy stuff or, or bad things. Or Let's just, you know, that kind of, it kills the joy that we have here at our church. Okay, you just take that elsewhere. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. What's the whole church building experience about? making your life more comfortable, making things work out better and whatever else. It's also a modern Christian woman in, in uh, comments on a video and she said that, uh, I just was reading the Bible and it said that, um, you know, in the Bible it says that the, the duty of man is to enjoy his life and, and to work with his hands. And that's the whole duty of man. And I thought, huh? No, it's to realize that you're a sinner and realize that there's a standard by which you're going to be judged. And you better get somebody to, you know, be your advocate in heaven. You better get somebody else to pay your price or pay the price of your sin. But you see, modern churches, it's all about loving themselves. All these little seminars and everything else. Church buildings are for teaching lost people religious things, I'm telling you. Whether you like it or not. Covetous. Our church is bigger than your church. How many people do you have in your Sunday school? Uh, how much soul winning do you do? We've led 20,000 people to the Lord. How many have you done? Mm -hmm. Our church is growing all the time. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You see? Covetous. 
boasters. There's no tie in there with church buildings, is there? Um, this is the, uh, I remember the church I grew up in, it was Clarence Lefevre was the guy, and uh, they had actually a whole, the fellowship you know, hall and the, and the gymnasium that was built onto this thing cost, I don't know how much money. It was called Lefevre Hall. Named part of the church after the guy that was there and founded it and the, the whatever else and made the cult building get really big. Mm -hmm. Hiles Anderson College. Bob Jones University. What is that? I mean, you know, what do you people think if I came out and I said, uh, I'm going to call this, I'm actually going to um, come out with a, a study Bible and I'm going to call it the, the Brian Denlinger Bible. You know, I'm going to start up a big church building someplace or a Bible institute and it's going to be called Brian Denlinger Institute. What is it? Boasters. Which leads to what? Proud. Are people in church buildings proud? Uh, I love the, the thing. They have a Baptist flag. You know, they, there's actually a Baptist flag. It's white and red and thing, you know. And I've heard people, you know, I showed it my new IFB face palm challenge thing. No face palm challenge. And, um, and it's uh, the Adam Fannin, one of the guys. He's been you know, excommunicated now from the IFB, new IFB. But, uh, you know, he came out and he said, I'm proud to be a Baptist. <laughs> I'm proud of my church. You know, I'm, I'm proud to be here. Oh, well, then you're fulfilling Scripture. Not good. How about blasphemers? I've gone to church buildings and I've heard people, I remember the one Cornerstone Baptist Church, guy stood up and he sang, you know, the, the Holy City song or whatever, you know, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you know, that, that song. He sang that thing Sunday morning and the pastor's crying and oh, just oh, so touching and thank you, brother, and all this stuff. Saw him one time at a store, he walks outside and somebody says, oh, did you see that card? And the guy says, oh my, you know, and uses God's name in vain. And I'm thinking, oh, Mr almost opera singer quality here, singer guy, and, and yet you're using God's name in vain when you're not in church. Blasphemers. Yeah, the Bible talks about that the word of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. Yeah. Women that are rotten to their husbands and things. Of course, that doesn't ever happen with church buildings, does it? Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents can't even have them with you in the church service put them down the little kitty church thing down there and you, you give them the nice the corn syrup candy and whatever else and and uh cold hard eyes you know all this different stuff pixie sticks with blue sugar in it and you know that's because they re recited their memory verse and then they take the thing and then they're acting and bouncing off the walls and whatever else and the parents are going jimmy jimmy come on, put, put that down come over here stop running around the church and, and stuff last church building i went to Country Chapel Baptist Church, there was a family there and, and uh, the pastor, the one, or the, we're up there, I'm talking with the pastor and myself and this father, he's standing there and his boy goes up and he's taking hymn books, about maybe three years old, he's taking these hymn books and he just, he, 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 he's just throwing the hymn books and just grabbing them and throwing the hymn books and the father's going, stop that, hey, stop that, <laughs> you know, happens all the time in church buildings. Why? Because lost people go to church buildings to learn religious things. Unthankful. How many people are really thankful that go to church buildings? You know, content with what they have. Not too many. I mean, I've been, I was in Honduras many years ago. The uh, church building down there was basically a, you know, like a pavilion, essentially. It was open, totally on the sides, just had screens there and, and it was dirt floor and little wooden benches, you know, no back on them. And you sit there, you know, in the dirt and the guy's up front preaching and, you know, whatever. And, and there's, you know, some stray dog comes running through the thing and walks around and sits down and rolls over and then he gets up and walks out and, you know, you see somebody over there and they're, oh, there's a mosquito, oh man, you know, whatever else. And, and a couple children that get up and, oh, there's a scorpion there and stomping the thing out. Americans? Are you kidding me? 
hey, uh, American Christians, come on into the church. It's open to nature, and you're going to be slapping some mosquitoes and whatever. Oh, oh well, I just oh, I don't think we could do a thing like that. What are they? Unthankful? How about the next one? Unholy. And when I say unthankful because, you know, you don't have it, whatever, I'm just saying American Christians would never put up with that type of thing. They have to have the nice little look of their church building and everything else. And if it was taken away from them, they'd pout and scream and you know, weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. But uh, <laughs> how about unholy? Let's bring in a bunch of tight dress wearing, mini skirt wearing, spike heel prostitutes and put them up on stage and have them sing hymns. Pole dancing for Jesus. Let's bring that in. Let's bring in heavy metal. And then just say, God's views on you know, music is amoral. <laughs> amoral. It doesn't matter. There is no good music or bad music. Oh, uh, where would your heavy metal come from? It doesn't matter. It's amoral. Uh, no, it actually came from the occult. Okay, voodoo and, you know, all the witchcraft, the druidic traditions and things like that. That's where the, the heavy beat, the beat that, that gives more emphasis to the flesh, that the flesh likes to hear. Let's just not talk about that because we need to be like the lost to win the lost. You see, church buildings are for teaching lost people religious things. And yet you go to these heavy metal Christians. I used to be one. Don't even tell me about it. You go to these heavy metal Christians and you say, what you're doing is wicked. Who are you to judge me? I believe Jesus died for me. I believe in the cross and I believe I know how to read the Bible and I've been to church all my life and who are you to judge? You see? Unholy. Without natural affection. Again, you care so much about your little church building and about your little church family and whatever. And there's so many other things that are more important out there than some stupid building. And of course, what's going on right now? Well, there's so much debate within the church about accepting sodomy and having them come in and let's have let's have female pastors and let's have feminism and let's let's have this and whatever, all these unholy things coming into these church buildings. Why? Because they're filled with lost people. And even the most die-hard church building advocate has to admit that the vast majority the vast majority of church buildings are filled to the brim with lost people. And if the catching up happens on a Sunday morning, very few churches would even be disturbed by it. They hear a sound and everybody would say, what was that? Did you hear kind of like a loud clap of thunder? I wonder what that was. I don't know. Wouldn't even disturb the service. Oh, we'll, we'll, get, we'll see what's going on afterwards, you know. Well, I mean, the, the babies would be gone, so that would probably disturb them, but none of the adults would be leaving. <laughs> Disgusting. Truce breakers. Um, boy, I could say a whole bunch of things on that. Truce breakers, you know. Um, people that don't keep their word, essentially. How about uh, preachers that don't keep the word? Stand up in the pulpit and say, God's word says today to you, friend, Will you believe the promises of God's word? And you say, oh, that book there? Do you believe it's perfect? No, oh, this? No, this is just a translation. No translation can be inspired. Um, they all have errors. And what are you doing calling it God's word then? And, you know, we could go into the, all the different things of what truce breakers mean, whatever. But you get my point here. Can you trust the word of people that go to church buildings? Again, you don't. Another story from my past. Two different sawmills down in Pennsylvania where I used to be from. And I was big into wood turning and, and things. And I'd go to these different sawmills. Both had exotic hardwoods. Uh, stuff, you know, uh, wood from other countries. Purple Heart, Coca-Cola, Bubinga, you know, all these different. Wengi and Paducah and whatever. And then they also had exotic hardwoods from, or not exotic, but, uh, you know, kind of uh, hardwoods and things from local area, you know, tiger maple, bird's eye maple, you know, stuff like that, figured walnut and whatever, and really expensive wood, in other words. And the one sawmill was run by these just rednecks, drinking, smoking, rough guys, and those guys would bend over backwards to give me a good deal. The other sawmill was run by Christians, modern Christians. You go in there and they'd have Christian radio playing and whatever else, you know, CCM type of thing. Those people tried to cheat me so many times. 
They, they just lied to my face. They were trying to charge me. This is a number one select, you know, and, and for this, you know, block of wood or this board that I'm trying to get. I'm, that's not a number one select. It's got a, you know, bark inclusion here. It's got knots there. Not, it's not number one select. What are you talking about? And a couple of times I just said, oh, fine, I don't want it. And I had to walk out. Get my truck, go down the road to the guys that drink and cuss and, and smoke and whatever else and say, hey, I'm looking for someone. Oh, we're, we were waiting for you to come in, Brian. Come here, check this out. We got this wood here. We, we'll give it to you for a real good price. A lot of times I'm thinking, so let me get this straight. I can't trust the Christians, but I can trust the lost people. Yeah, truce breakers, people that don't keep their word. How about the uh, false accusers? Brian Denlinger teaches lordship salvation. Uh, no, I don't. Um, Brian, T Brian Denlinger uh, denies that Jesus is the son of God. No, I don't. Um, Brian Denlinger teaches, you know, whatever. He preaches work salvation. He preaches false salvation. Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> okay, not for today. In the future, millennial kingdom, it is work salvation because Jesus Christ is physically on the earth. You can't have faith in somebody that is physically on the earth. All right? <laughs> Incredible. What do we have? False accusers. And the vast majority of them are in church buildings. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the people that lie about me the most are not the atheists or even the Roman Catholics. It's people that profess to hold of this book right here. Church building people. The greatest enemies that I have are people that profess to be Christians. And it's the same thing with you, isn't it? The people that, if you have any kind of ministry online, the people that dog you more than anyone else are professing Christians. You know I speak the truth. Incontinent. <laughs> Again, I mean, I'm getting kind of long here on the whole thing, but just, you know, we're going to skip and go to the next one here. Fierce. Yeah, I want to get through these. Despisers of those that are good. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Traitors. I used to watch, you know, Brian's ministry and now, you know, he's this and I'm going to attack him and whatever. You know, I've had people that, that don't like what I've said and whatever else and they go away and they say, yeah, brother, I can't support you anymore. I don't agree with what you said. And they go away. They do their own thing. But uh, other people, they form, I mean, there are people that literally go out and get a camera and start their channel on YouTube just so they can make videos against me. Crazy. Heady, high-minded. Oh, I have more education. I'm smart on this and that. Sure. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. I can show you all kinds of scriptures where God condemns certain sins, and yet you don't want to give up those sins as a professing Christian. Why? You love the pleasure more than you love God. I say, hey, you know what? You shouldn't be watching the Super Bowl. Oh, what the fuck? Well, I enjoy, I enjoy football. I enjoy sports. I, I'm, I've been a, sports, a fan of sports all my life. Yeah, but look at the halftime shows. They're wicked. Satanic rituals in them things a lot of times. I mean, they're doing all kinds of wicked occult type of stuff in these things. And you get Christian churches having Super Bowl night. Why? Um, probably because church buildings are filled with lost people that are there only to learn some things, religious type of terms and whatever else. But you ought to you ought to quit watching the Super Bowl. It's wicked. Well, I just enjoy it. You know what? Uh huh. Hey, you know what? You ought to quit your alcohol. Quit messing around with that stuff. It's expensive. It's not going to do your health any good. You know, just drinking all the time to the point of getting drunk. I'll say it that way. You know, a lot of that stuff. You ought to give that up. You ought to quit that. You ought to quit your watching TV, television. What is that? What is it doing to you? It's messing up your mind, changing your worldview, turning you against Scripture. Well, I just don't know. I, you know. Mm -hmm. Hey, you ought to get away from church buildings. Oh, I, I couldn't stand to be away from my church family because we do lots of fun things together. Boy, I can't wait till Sunday so I can go and I can just blab, 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 blab about anything but the Bible. Go to a church building sometime and just say, hey, I, did you ever see this thing from Scripture and walk up to people afterwards and look, look at this, look at that? You'll make people nervous. 
Why? Because lost people go to these church buildings to learn religious things. That's why. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such, turn away. Um, you're going to a church building? Uh, you need to leave. Plain and simple. Uh, the Bible never told you to go to a church building. The Bible does not say go to church. It doesn't say anything of the kind. So, just want to do a little study there. Nothing real ultra detailed. I mean, you go over every single one of those points. But, <laughs> I'm going to make this thing a lot longer than it needs to be. Um, Satan has used church buildings more than God ever did or ever will. And the greatest manifestation of church building Satanism is going to be in the future. The time of Jacob's trouble. The whole world is going to worship the beast. You worship in church buildings. And the image of the beast is going to be there. And I believe it's going to be this new 3D holographic thing. They're going to project the image of the guy and he can stand there and he can preach to him and say, you know, we're all true Catholics now. This is a Catholic just means universal. I still get that in the comments. I think people are just never waking up, are you? You know, Roman Catholic is different than Catholic because Catholic just means universal, and Roman Catholic is a different thing. And what? Are, my word, <laughs> wake up! Catholic is a philosophical term that was there before Jesus Christ even you know, before he even showed up. You know, the Greek philosophers came up with the word Catholic. It was there. Jesus could have used it, and he didn't. You know, so the Roman Catholics they say we'll just make a universal church here. It wasn't all the, the Christians. They, at first they were Catholic, but then later the Romans came along and made false Roman Catholicism. You don't have a verse of scripture to back that thing up. You couldn't prove it if your life depended on it. Christians never called themselves Catholics. How do you know? Oh, I don't know. Maybe you can look it up in here. All the word Catholic's not in there. Okay, then drop it. So, um, if you're still going to a church building, what in the world are you doing? You got to defend it. All right. Whatever. Just uh, hope I challenge you somewhat. So that is going to be it. And we will see you in the next study.